Hello everyone. So uh, in this video, I am going to talk about SL1 pilot paper. So before watching this video, I am assuming that you have already watched all the theory videos. Uh, in financial reporting part as well as risk of material misstatement and related topics. Without having proper understanding about the theory, no point of watching this video. Okay. So, and why pilot paper? Because pilot paper is the sort of like a test paper when we have the new syllabus launch. So, we can get understanding from the pilot paper what would be the real examination? What would be the real examination? What would be the thinking pattern of your examiner? Right? So, uh, let's go through the pilot paper. And as you know, I am only responsible and I am only doing the risk of material misstatement and the related topics like corporate governance and the ethics part, non finance reporting. So, there are certain topics I am covering. You would have seen that in the tracker sheet. The rest of the areas of the pilot paper, especially on the finance reporting, will be conducted by uh, Mr. Chandler. Okay, so I'm going to focus on only the uh, risk of material statement. So basically, we call it audit part. Okay, audit part. But before going there, I would like to uh, go through the instruction page. So let's go to the instruction page. So you can see strategic level one. Advanced Business Reporting, SL1 Pilot Paper, time allowed 15 minutes and write in 3 hours. So you have 15 minutes, 100 marks, answer all questions, all are compulsory. This paper consists of two sections. Section 1, 2, 2 questions. Section 1, we have 2 questions and section 2, 1 question based on the common precinct. So question number 3 is the precinct question. We all know that. Answer should be in the English language in the answer booklet given to you. So you can't write in Sinhalese or Tamil or any other language. It should be in English. Begin each answer on a separate page in the answer booklet. Submit all working. So this is a standard one. The examination will be conducted as an open book examination. And only the following publications of CA Sri Lanka will be permitted to be used in the examination hall. So very important to understand this part. So you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, about 10 publications are there. So I'm going to show you those publications. Okay. So Sri Lanka Accounting Standard 2020. So you can see Sri Lanka Accounting Standard 2020. Okay. Sri Lanka Accounting Standard 2020. So you have volume 1 and then volume 2. So there are two volumes. Okay. So this one SLFRS, so 1 to 16. This one from LKS 1 to uh, 41. So 2020 accounting standard, number one. Number two, open book referential, right? Open book referential, this is that book. Open book referential. So this includes statement of alternative treatment. There are certain SOAT. Sri Lanka Statement of Recommended Practice, SORP, IFRIC and SIX, these are the interpretations, and then Conceptual Framework for Financial Reporting. So, this include all that. Okay. And these are actually mostly for financial reporting. Then you have Sri Lanka Auditing Standards and Sri Lanka Standards on Quality Control. So, this is Sri Lanka Auditing Standard. Okay, volume one, you can see clearly volume one. And then Sri Lanka is other assurance engagement, that is volume two. It is the volume two. Okay, this is volume two. And then Sri Lanka framework for audit quality, that is the volume three. So these are actually three books, one, two, and three for auditing standard. First, you have all the auditing standards from SLA US 100 to 800 series in this big book, volume one. Then you have volume two, uh, assurance engagements, okay. And then uh, volume three, you have audit quality and CA Sri Lanka assurance framework, assurance framework. So that is on this. Then you have code of best practice on corporate governance. So unfortunately, I don't have 
to show that with me now, right now, but I'm going to show you on the screen code of best practice, corporate governance. So this one we have already discussed, okay? This one we have already discussed uh, in corporate governance videos, okay? In the corporate governance videos, we have discussed this. So any questions from the corporate governance, we have to refer that. We have to refer that. Then, guide to corporate governance is small and medium enterprises. So, this is the small and medium enterprise. So, it's a small booklet, okay, talking about uh, corporate governance for small enterprises, okay, small enterprises. If it is a small company, we have to talk about the corporate governance, so you need to repair this one, okay, you repair this one. Right, then we have Code of Ethics 2016, now this one. Code of Ethics 2016, okay? Code of Ethics 2016, this book, right? And then Sri Lanka Accounting Standards for SME. Ah. Sri Lanka Accounting Standards for SME. So this is Sri Lanka Accounting Standards for Small and Medium Enterprises. Then you have another one called Sri Lanka Accounting Standards for Small Entities. So more. Smaller than this one also. SME and then small, small entities. Right? So, these are the permitted publications. So, nothing else you can take. And let's read. Students are allowed to bring permitted publications that are highlighted, sidelined or underlined. Short notes written on the permanent publication will also be allowed. But remember, short note means now if you if you are writing any short note in this one, this is the volume two of the ordering standard book. So there are, you know, you can see some blank pages are there. Some blanks are there, right? So in this blank, you can write some notes. But remember that note should be something from this book only. Otherwise, what happens? Your invigilators, okay, your invigilators, they will, uh, you know, uh, put together and then clip it. They will clip it. So you can't even read wherever you have written. So whatever the short notes from your study pack or whatever, don't write. Only the short notes relevant to this book, you can write. Okay. Uh, answers that are written on the answer booklet, graph papers and any other station issued by the examiner hall only are considered when marking. Any other attack documents are not taken into account at the time of marking papers. Why it is specifically mentioned? Because sometimes what happens, maybe you just tear it off huh? and then attach as the answer. No, you cannot do that. Make a answer you can't clip it, okay? Right, so that's it. So these are the instructions, simple. Now let's go and see the questions, okay? So I have already gone through the questions, so I'm not going to uh, read whatever unnecessary questions for me. Question number one, directly from the financial reporting part, okay, application of accounting standards. So I'm not going to go through that part. So I'll quickly go to Question number two. Okay, question number two is coming from uh, risk of material misstatement or the corporate governance part. Okay, so that we are going to we are going to discuss. Okay, section one. And remember one thing. Here, my objective is to not to write the full answer. Right? If I'm going to write the full answer, then it it might take you know a lot of timing. That is unnecessary. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to give you the answer structure and how to write the answer. That is the training I'm going to give. But you need to write the answer. You have to write the answer. And anyway, this pilot paper, you have a suggested answer also, but suggested answer is too descriptive. Huh? Too descriptive. You can't write that kind of answer in the examination. Then you can only write answer for one question only. You will not be able to cover all the questions. Okay? Right, so, and most importantly, most importantly, I am going to use these books. And I'm going to show you how to use the books to find the answers as well. 
But to do that, you should have watched all my videos. You should have, you should know the summary as well. And then you should have read these books well before the examination. You should have gone through these books. Okay? You should have gone through all these books. And you should have bought all these books. Huh? You have to purchase all these books. Otherwise, another problem. I know some people are not purchasing. So please purchase the whole lot. Okay? And then go through it before the examination. Right. So let's look at the question number two. So you can see in the screen now. Okay? You can see in the screen now. Uh, Max Fernando. Okay? So there is a big, uh, you know, write-up is there. So I'm not going to uh, read the write-up uh, until I see the requirement. So remember, whenever you have a big write-up, big scenario, always go and see the requirement first. Understand the requirement and then read the scenario. That will help you to identify the answers as well. Require. Explain the difference between management and governance too much. Even you don't have to read the scenario also. You have to just explain the difference between management and governance. Not those charged with governance. Huh? Not those charged with governance, but they are also doing the governance only. Management and governance, so two marks. Now say for example, you don't know this answer. You don't know about this answer, you can't remember that. Still you can write something, you have the books, no? Management and governance. But you should know where to find it. Where to find it. If you have watched my SLA US 200 basic concept video, I have told you, you know, there are definitions, very critical definitions like management, those charged with governance, likewise, the definitions are there. So if you don't remember the definition, you can quickly go to the book and find it. So volume one, you have the SLA US 200. If you go to the 200, you can quickly find what? The definition of management. Definition of management. So let me quickly go to the SLA US 200. Even you can find it from the glossary also. Huh? Glossary also you have, but better to go to SLA US 200. So when you go to SLA US 200, how to find this in the book? How to find easily? You have to quickly go to the content page. So you have content page. So from the content page, you can find the page number for that particular stand. So here, 200 is in page number 75. So you go to 75. So page number 75. Then you have another content page, content page of that particular standard. So you can quickly go through that content page also to find out. Here, I'm interested in definition. So page number 13. Uh, paragraph number 13. So paragraph number 13. We have definition in page number 78. Okay, so I'm looking at the page number 78 of Auditing Standard Volume 1, which is a permanent publication. Now, all these things you have to do very quickly. Huh? You have to do quickly. So if you go to, uh, now this is in the chronological order. So I'm looking for management. So I'm looking for M. Okay, I'm looking for M. Management, it is in page number 80. Management, persons with executive responsibility for the conduct of the entity's operation. For some entities in some jurisdiction, management includes some or all of, all of those charged with governance. For example, executive members of a governance board or owner manager. So you don't have to write everything for management, okay? So here you have to write about one sentence, two marks only, right? So you have to define two things, management and governance, two things. So better to explain by one sentence, one sentence. So here you can say management means persons with executive responsibility for the conduct of entity's operation, day-to-day -day operation, simple. Now to look at the governance, we have to go to those charged with governance. Definition for those charged with governance. Okay, that is the board of directors basically. So those charged with governance in page number 82. Now you don't have to define the those charged with governance, you have to define the governance. So what is the governance means? Governance means governing the company. Giving what? Strategic direction, right? Uh, uh, supervising the finance reporting process, financial reporting process. So likewise, that is the governance. You can see the person, organization, for example, with responsibility for, uh, this is the governance means, overseeing the strategic direction, obligation to accountability, right? And then finance reporting process, overseeing the financial reporting process. So these three things means governance. Means governance. So management and governance, how to find the answer from the book? 
If you don't remember, obviously you should have, you know, heard about this from our videos. What is management? What is those charge governance? And even those charge governance, I have, you know, discussed, I have defined in the corporate governance videos also. Okay. So that is the uh, Roman number one. So simple as that, Roman number one. Okay. So uh, Roman number one, management and governance. Management and governance, so you can actually put one sentence each. Management and governance, I have shown you how to find the answer from the book. Okay. Then we go to Roman number two. Roman number two. So Roman number two, with respect to the letter sent by the major shareholder to the board, criticize the current board composition and effectiveness of its function. So board composition and the functions. So to criticize. Now this one, also if you don't remember the uh, content about the board composition or the board effectiveness from the best code of corporate governance book, and the listing rule. Obviously, listing rule is not a permanent publication, so you have to remember the listing rule. Okay. Or you can write the listing rule, uh, that relevant section, you know, uh, together with the that relevant section in the best code of corporate governance book. So that means you are writing the same thing, right? Uh, so nine marks given. Nine marks given. Right? Nine marks given. Okay. So for to write answer for that, obviously, you have to read. But I can do like this. I can, I can, I can actually uh, plan the answer. I can plan the answer. So we have a question about board composition and effectiveness of the function. Okay, board composition and effectiveness of the function. So I can do uh, in table. Okay, I can do it in a table. So board composition. Board composition and effectiveness of function, board functions. Effectiveness of the board functions. Effectiveness of the board functions. Right. Effectiveness of the board function. So this is how we are going to write the answer. Problem number three. Outline the four key roles of non-executive directors with their relevance to the board of Pinnacle PLC. Ah, then Roman number three. Roman number three. Roman number three. Uh, role of non-executive directors. Now this I have explained very clearly in the videos. And I have given easier to remember also. SSRP. Strategy role, scrutiny role, risk role, and people role. So this also can be done in a nice table. This also can be done in a nice table. So role, application to Pinnacle PLC, whatever the company. So you have strategy role. Then you have a scrutiny role. Then you have a risk role. Then you have people's role. So likewise, you can explain. See, very simple. You have to understand the answer also, right? You have to understand the answer also. Okay? Right, that is number three, Roman number three. Then, part B, part B, let's talk about Okay, that's a separate one. Five marks for that. So we will, we will, we will do this and then we can go to the balance one. Okay, right. Okay, so now let's look at the uh, part two and part three. Okay, so I already explained you the answer structure. Now we need to read the scenario and identify the answer. So let's quickly go to the scenario. And remember, question number two, part two, about the board composition and then effectiveness of the board function. We have to identify the, we have to uh, criticize. That means we have to identify the weaknesses and give recommendations. Okay, give recommendation to improve. Max Fernando is the group CEO, Kung Chairman of Pinnacle PLC. See, starting point, you have an answer. 
by CEO and chairman same. Now, as per the best code of corporate governance, CEO and chairman has to be separated because these are two powerful roles. If, if combined, definitely there can be what? There can be uh, dominance, right? One dominating guy dominating the uh, board. Uh, together with his two brother, Amal and Kamal Fernando, and elder sister, Shanika Fernando. His two brother, Amal, and so there are brothers and elder sister. As executive, so it's a, like a family company. Even though it's a PLC, family is actually running the business. Amal is in charge of marketing and Kamal and Shanika handle supply chain and operation respectively. Dushant Bandar is the finance director of the group. In order to comply with the listing rule, two directors have been appointed as independent and natural directors on the recommendation of Max. So Max is the chairman and CEO so and he is recommending. He can't recommend. Actually, nom nomination committee need to do that. Nomination committee. So, uh, Chamal Pereira, who is a retired C CFO of a private company, act as a chairman of the audit committee. And Gihan Alvis, an electrical engineer by profession, act as the other director on the audit committee. So, you can see audit committee. Uh, one guy is CFO, but I don't know whether he has a qualification or not. But the other guy is electrical engineer. So, I think uh, if you look at the, the balance in the audit committee, Financial acumen that is also not there, and the independence. So they are, they, they are, they these two should be independent, but looks like they are not independent also. So we need to look at the criteria of the independence. The main purpose of the audit committee is to alert the main board on any risk that affect the achievement of performance target, uh, and to send to avoid any remarks by auditors on their report on annual financial. So basically, very narrow role. You know, uh, audit committee has a larger role. If you can't remember, please go to this best code of corporate governance book, right? Then you can go to audit committee charter. So there's audit committee charter, right? So if you go to the content page, we have already discussed all this. Huh? So in the accountability and audit, you can see audit committee here, okay? So audit committee all, uh, how many members, you know, that their role and all that, everything is mentioned. And then when you go to the annexes, annexes you can see uh, audit committee charter here. So audit committee charter, it has everything, what audit committee has to do, what audit committee has to do. So here there are, you know, limitations, so there are weaknesses. These two directors also uh, represent the nomination and nomination committee, okay. Profile of accelerators are given in the table below. Right? Okay. Max Fernando is the founder and entrepreneur with 30 years of management experience, mechanical engineer by profession. Amal Fernando, director of marketing, overall responsibility, so he has SIMA, okay. Kamal Fernando, again SIMA. Shanika Fernando, software engineer. So Shanika is looking after what? Supply chain. So software engineer is looking after supply chain. So I think, you know, there are a lot of issues with the management also. Diversity, both diversity is not there. Dushanta Vandal, uh, MBA uh, and Chartered Finance Analyst, so I think, okay. Decision making is delegated to divisional managers who report to the Chief Operating Officer. Quarterly, board meetings are held to discuss financial and operational KPIs. Ah, you can see board main role is to provide the strategic direction. Talk about the strategy. If you go to the role of the board in the Best Code of Corporate Governance book, if you go down, role of the board, okay, role of the board. So there is a role. Board need to play that role. Here, the board role is to provide entrepreneurial leadership to the company and then, you know, strategy, formulation, and implementation of business strategy. So there are a lot of things to be done by the board but here they are board meeting mostly financial and operational kpi only so it is more like a management meeting rather than a board meeting okay so all these are answers sir. effectiveness of the board effectiveness of the board mr kennedy uh, key decision made at the management subcommittee meeting or table at the board meeting mr kennedy silva largest shareholder has sent a letter ah, this is the question number two no Expressing his disappointment on the conduct of the board meeting. Board. Yeah, obviously. 
uh, in terms of the experience and the skill qualification, in terms of the diversity, in terms of the composition. It seems that they don't have the required number of non nexo directors. Only two non nexo directors are there. So you have to have at least three or one third of the board, uh, whichever is higher, right? So, and then uh, independent non nexo directors, whether they are independent or not, we don't know, right? And the board diversity is not there. So likewise, there are many issues. And the role of the board, uh, they are just onto the operational aspect only, not to talk about the strategic aspects. Uh, so one of the shareholders is not happy. He drew particular attention to the below deficiencies at board level, which contributed to issues at the group underwent during the recent past, including a demand drop caused by a recent abrupt increase in prices of the engine and allegation by resign employee over installing DP device to alter the result of emission testing. Now you can see even the board effectiveness, they have ethical issues also. Board need to promote the ethics and integrity. But here they are trying to manipulate, they are trying to hide. Okay, and there are challenges to the board right now in terms of, you know, uh, market competition. Obviously because uh, entire board is not looking after the strategy. They are only looking after operational aspects. So these are the allegations made. So we need to address these allegations huh, in the question number two. In this one, somewhere we have to address these issues. Board has not discharged its fundamental duty concerning study formulation. Yes. Policy making and monitoring of management. The board has acted as a rubber stamp. Ah, you can see in my tute, uh, typical board. Okay. Effect effectiveness of the board. Board to be effective, they need to, you know, uh, make decisions, talk about the strategy, right? A board documentation, like uh, there are many aspects. Risk management. Okay. Uh, but here, they are like a rubber stamp. Whatever the management committee meeting is making, they just sign. So nothing else. So effectiveness is not there. The board has acted rubber stamp in approving management decision and allowing management to act on their own. So supervision is not there. There has not been enough information to evaluate the consequence of decision and deliberation on strategic issues arising from such decision. This has led to the risk of blind decision being made using hunch or gut feeling by dominant board members without considering the competitive environment. So, uh, about the strategic environment, about the competitive environment, nothing is considered. So, there are demand drop, okay, like uh, there are many issues. The role of non executive directors are to be serious to question, so that we are going to do in question number three. Three roles, uh, four roles, SSRP, strategy role, scrutiny role, risk role and people role. This is completely on corporate governance, huh? you can see. Board has failed to create a culture of honesty and integrity, obviously. Popular. Because there are many, you know, uh, issues with the uh, emission. When this letter was taken up at the board meeting, Chamal Pereira expressed his displeasure over withholding some key information such as allegation by recent employee and stated that he intends to step down from all board position with immediate effect. So, Basically, board is hiding things also, hiding, hiding information. Integrity and honesty is a big problem. Okay, so that's it, right? So it seems that uh, two non executive directors, they are actually not participating enough to support the strategy setting process of the executive directors. And scrutiny role, they need to scrutinize the strategy adopted by the executive, executive directors. They need to ask the question. They need to challenge it. Risk role, I don't think, you know, there's nothing on the risk management. So that is a big problem in the effectiveness. Huh? So risk management. And people, you know, identifying and promoting, identifying and uh, developing key talents. Okay. So uh, nomination committee, these two independent directors need to play a bigger role. So there also a little bit of a concern is there. Okay. So uh, if we just look at a couple of points, okay, for the board composition, board composition, one of the point is CEO chairman. CEO chairman combined role. CEO chairman combined role. So this is a problem, right? This is a problem. So you can give a recommendation also. 
obviously they can combine, right? But they, they need to justify in the annual report, right? Otherwise, it should be separated. It should be separate. Then they have only two non-executive directors, right? Two non-executive directors. But as per the requirement, it should be three or one third of the board, whichever is higher, right? So there is a problem with the number of non-executive directors also. Then independence of the non-executive directors. Independence. Independence of non-executive directors. So these two. They say that these two are actually independent and unnecessary directors. So there are criteria. Criteria. So it seems that, I am not sure because information is not that much available. Seems that their independence is a problem. Right? Because recommended by chairman. Recommended by chairman. Recommended by chairman. And then about the board diversity. Diversity. Board diversity. You can see, you know, uh, no financial acumen. Right? Financial acumen. And uh, audit committee also having only electrical engineer, right? And then even the skill and experience of executive directors also. Skill and experience of executive directors, EDs. So one, one, uh, one lady having, not having any experience or the qualification in procurement, supply chain, she is, but she is managing the supply chain. So issues in terms of the board composition. When you, when you go to effectiveness of the board or the effectiveness of the functions, right? So you have to talk about the board role, right? Board role from the best code of corporate governance. Best code of corporate governance, so you can give some examples. One, two, three, four. Couple of roles. You can see here we discussed already that. So here. Risk management, strategy setting, strategy evaluation, nothing is happening. Nothing is happening there. Okay. So and the board meetings also they are only talking about what? Operational issues only. So you can see board board meetings. Focusing on operational KPIs only, right? And whatever the decisions taken by the management meeting, they just ratify only. They just ratify. And then honesty and integrity. We discussed that. Honesty and integrity. That's a big problem. Honesty and integrity, that's a big problem. Okay? And then role of the audit committee. Role of the audit committee also, you can see from the uh, audit committee charter. If you go to audit committee charter, audit committee need to look at a lot of things about the internal auditor, about the uh, internal controls, about the risk management, about the governance. So there are many aspects audit committee need to look for, not only to manage the external auditor, but in this case, only their, you know, their focus is only to manage the external auditor only, for role of the audit committee. Right? So, and then role of the non executive director number two, uh, number three, that's also we have covered. Okay, that's also we have covered. So, here I am actually, as I told you, I am giving you only summary of the answer, how to find the answer. Okay, so let's go to the next part. An integrated report is a concise communication about how organization studies governance, performance, and prospects in the context of its external environment lead to the creation of value. Now, this is from the non-finance reporting, from the integrated reporting, okay, that I have covered in a short note also in a separate video. If you don't remember, please watch that video again. Non-finance reporting, integrated reporting, required for five marks, demonstrate how organization create value using multi-capital approach. How many capital are there? There are six capital, right? There are six capital. So, part, part B of the question. Part B of the question, asking about the integrated reporting. Six capital. So we will talk about this six capital. Financial capital, manufactured capital, intellectual capital, human capital, natural capital, 
and social capital, social and relationship capital. So there are six types of capital. So this six type will be the input. And then based on the vision and mission, processing happen and then output also. Output also will be the six type of capital. Right? So creating value, business model, input, process and output. That is how to create. But you need to explain. So financial capital, what is financial capital? But don't need to uh, explain in detail, la. only one, one sentence maximum. So what organizations are doing, using these seven inputs, uh, six inputs or six capital, and trying to you know, process it in a way they add more value to this six capital and then give it to another organization. Right? So look at the business from the capital point of view. Okay, five marks given for that. Easy one, huh? easy one. And remember one more thing. Integrated framework is not a permitted publication. Huh? So you have uh, that one. So you need to remember. I hope you remember there were, you know, uh, principles. Principles of integrated reporting. And then uh, contents of the integrated report format. Integrated report format. Right? So like uh, there are things you need to remember. Huh? This integrated reporting is a possible question. Okay, possible question. Part C. OPL Private Limited, a 90% owned subsidiary of TRC PLC, has continuously been making substantial losses over the past years. So let's go and see what is the requirement. Discuss the ethical issues arising from the above scenario in relation to the action of the accountant and CFO. Okay. Now, ethical issues. And you know, accountant and CFO both are. Professional accountants in business. Ah. Part C. Professional accountants in business. Part C. Professional accountants in business. So talking about what? Part C of the Code of Ethics. Part C of the Code of Ethics. So you have the Code of Ethics book with you. Okay. Code of Ethics book with you. So if you go to the content page. And I have discussed in my videos also. Okay. Part C. This is the part C. I'll just, you know, uh, read so you can remember part C talking about uh, introduction, conflict of interest. So how to resolve the conflict of interest. Preparation and reporting of information. So as a business accountant, one of my main tasks is to prepare the information and present the information to others. Acting with sufficient expertise. So if I'm going to do something, I need to have expertise. Otherwise, I'm violating the Professional competence and due care principle. Then financial interest. You can't have financial interest. Compensation and incentives linked to financial reporting and decision making. You know, sometimes, not sometimes, most of the time, bonus for the senior management, bonus depends on the profitability. So, as the CFO, I am preparing an income statement where I have a profit based on that, I'm going to get a bonus. So I have to be very careful. If I have a financial interest to show more profit, so I can get more bonus. So that is actually, you know, talking about that. Inducement, you know, giving offers. And then you have the NOCLA. So these are the areas covered in Ethics for Business Accountants, Part C. Ethics for Business Accountants. Now let's see the, here, so requirement is to discuss the ethical issues for Accountant CFO. Discuss, no? So you need to discuss. So what we can do is we can have a table there. So for the accountant, what are the issues? And for the CFO, what are the issues? Accountant and CFO. Simple. Okay. Let's see. OPL Private Limited, 90% own subsidiary of KRC PLC. Has continuously been making substantial losses over the past years. So losses, huh? so that means pressure on the management. KRC PLC operate a profit related bonus scheme for its managers based upon the consolidated final statement, but recent results have been poor and bonus targets have rarely been achieved. Okay. So for both the people, so for both, I think they have financial interest. Financial interest. Because bonus is based on the profit, bonus. So financial. Now you can see 
the advantage of having the book, right? So we, I just show you the content page. So now things are there. If you want more details, obviously you can get from here also. But remember, you have only how many marks? Only five marks. That means you need to get the book, read the book, find the answer, and write also. So you can you can waste the time. This five marks means you need to you know do uh, minimum or maximum by five five into one point three minutes. So uh, five about seven minutes. So in seven minutes you need to find. Summarize and write also, not easy. So that's why you have to have a practice. You should have done this before the examination. As of 31st March 2020, KRC PLC had the plan to sell OPL Private Limited. Okay, so KRC, so they are trying to sell OPL. This plan has been approved by the Board of Directors and reported in the media. So they are going to sell. It is expected that Times PLC, a potential buyer, will acquire 90% equity interest of OPL. Expect, right? I and mean, we don't know. Nothing is concrete. Huh? The sale is expected to be completed by July 2020. So expected. The accountant of KRC PLC wishes to show that OPL Limited was held for sale in the consolidated finance statement and created structuring provision restructuring provision uh, to include both the expected cost of disposal and future trading losses. Oh, maybe if the conditions are satisfied as per LK 37, restructuring provision can be made. And uh, reclassifying uh, it to help or sale also may be okay, but as per uh, SLFRS 5. Okay, so these accounting applications uh, accountant should know, but it seems that he doesn't know because he's trying to identify the trading loss also. So, uh, LK 37, provisions, contingent, assets and contingent liabilities, restructuring provision cannot include trading losses. So that means accountant does not have the competency. Uh, relevant competency. So he doesn't have the experience. Competence is not there. So professional competence and due care. Right? We have to write that. Uh, then the chief financial officer does not wish OPL to be disclosed as help for sale as this may affect the sale price. Oh. For the CFO does not wish to provide for the disposal costs and future trading losses and this would almost certainly mean bonus target would not be made. So here, financial interest is in a bigger way. At least, I would say accountant doesn't have financial interest much. So maybe I can remove also. But he has a problem of competency. He has a problem of competency. But for the CFO, financial interest is there. So integrity, also a problem. Integrity, being honest. So he is actually trying to manipulate. He is not going to show. Because if he is going to show, then there will be impact on the share price. The CFO has argued that they have to secure a high sale price to maximize the return for shareholders. No, no, no. That is a different matter, but this definitely has to be uh, considered. So you can see the difference, right? CFO is trying to manipulate. Okay. So he is actually trying to uh, manipulate the financial information because of the uh, incentive package, right? Incentive. And he has a financial interest. Accountant, the problem with the competence. So that's it, five marks to get the five marks. Okay, done. So I think uh, in this pilot paper, only question number two is there. Then we'll, let's quickly go to the question number three. Question number three. Uh, question number three actually based on the pre I am not going to discuss the whole pre no point. We have the uh, pre applicable for your examination that we are doing it in a separate video. Uh, but let me show you the related questions and easy questions actually. If you look at Roman number one, two and three, all one, two and three is from the risk of material emission. That means from the auditorium. Now you can see how many marks. 
7 plus 8, 15. 15 plus 3, 18. And then question number 2, 25 marks. So 25 plus 18. 25 plus 18. We have 43 marks from risk code material misstatement and the other area. Your study, uh, your syllabus weightage is 45 percent. So your pilot paper is more or less same as per the syllabus weightage. Syllabus weightage. So let's quickly read this question. We are not going to answer in full, but let's try to understand whether we can find the answer. Evaluate the control environment of Pinnacle PLC. Control environment. Explaining how the control of the uh, environment contribute to the reliability of finance reporting. Uh, reliability of financial reporting, control environment. Evaluate. Now you, you need to understand what is control environment. That is one of the component of the internal control uh, system. You have five components, right? C R I M E, crime. Okay. Control environment. Risk assessment by the management. Information communication. Monitoring. And control activities. So these are the five. COSO, internal control framework. And then control environment. And control environment has about six to seven components. Chopper, commitment to competence, ethical values, responsibility assignment, HR policies and procedures. So like there are many aspects to control environment. Now say for example, you forget that. You don't remember what are the components in the control environment. You have the book. Quickly go to this book. But you should know where that is. So if you have watched my SLA US 315 video, I, I have said that SLA US 315 has appendix talking about full components of the internal controls. So if you if you quickly go to the content page, okay, you can go to 315. So SLA US 315 revised standard in the latter part of the, con uh, uh, the content page. Page number 1246. So you have to go to 1246. Extreme latter part. 1246. So when you go to 1246, and then you need to go to the appendix basically. Okay. So you need to go to the appendix. Appendix 1, appendix 2. Right, so let's go to uh, revised standard, SLA US 315. Uh, I'm trying to go to the appendix actually. Okay, it's so appendix 3 basically. In page number 1204, page number 1204, components of the entity's internal control. And there you have control environment. Okay, so control environment encompasses the following elements. How management responsibility are carried out. When those charge, so, so it is there. So you have about six, seven components are there. So you need to write the six, seven components in a table, one side, left hand side, and then you have to evaluate from the scenario. Okay. Commitment to competence, whether <coughs> board is committed to competence or not. So from the scenario, you have to put it, but you know, to do that, you should have analyzed the precinct that we are doing for your precinct. Now, this is pilot precinct, no, no, no point of spending time there. Okay. But when we analyze in your precinct, applicable precinct for you, obviously we are look at, looking at all those aspects and we will give you the answer also. If this question comes, then you can easily find the answer as well. Okay. So, part two. Assume you are the CFO of Pinnacle PLC and you have been asked to present to the board key business risk together with financial statement impact of such risk. Outline four major business risks together with associated risk of matter. So this is one of the typical question in SL1 for editing. Identify the business risk. From the business risk, identify the risk of material misstatement. Right? So this will be one of the key questions. And I'm, uh, please watch the videos on the revision kit questions. I have done two, three questions there. Very important questions and I have explained the approach also. And we have, we have explained that in theory, okay, in the videos, but here the application. 
So you have to have a table. Business risk, risk of material and statement. Business risk, competition risk, uh, reputational risk, foreign exchange risk, interest rate risk, uh, customer concentration risk, uh, environmental risk, strategy risk, operational risk. So likewise, different, different types of business risk and then from that risk, what the risk of material statement can be. Again, this also we will be doing for your pricing, whatever the examination you are going to do, for your pricing, we are going to do it. You are going to uh, remember it, okay? And there can be additional information in the unseen, obviously, but uh, we are doing it, you know, uh, when we are analyzing the pricing. So, eight marks given for that. And remember, identifying the business risk, then identify the risk of mental misstatement, that is known as business risk approach to risk of material misstatement what is the uh, that is that is the approach given in sla us 350 okay then evaluate three fraud risk factors you know the fraud risk triangular right incentive pressure opportunities and rationalization so in sla us 240 so you have to identify only three so you have to evaluate three so three marks given for fraud risk factors when you are reading, you will find a lot of uh, risk factors there. Okay. So that is three marks. That's all. Okay. So don't misunderstand that I am not writing answer here for uh, question number three. Why I am not doing that? Because this is a pre scene base. So then we have to go through the whole pre scene, which is just time consuming, no need also. Okay. Right. But what I want you to understand is what is the question? Anyway, these are very famous areas. Huh? Uh, risk of material misstatement, business risk, uh, control environment, control risk, right? Likewise, all these areas, uh, fraud risk, all these areas we also analyze in the pre -seed. Okay, and we will give you for your particular pre -seed. But this question number two, Roman number two question uh, on the uh, business risk approach to risk of material misstatement, very common question for SL1. This can even com come in question number one or two also. One or two also. Okay. Okay, so thank you for watching uh, pilot paper and then you can continue watching for revision kit question. I'm planning to do 10 revision kit, uh, revision kit questions. Okay, goodbye.